I twisted the apron from dripping to damp and pictured Kyle rehearsing my termination speech on the way to work in his champagne Prius, smiling at himself in the rearview mirror when he dreamed up the masterstroke of sitting on my tips. One of his unicorn rare smiles that overrode Kyle's tendency to purse his chapped lips and conceal his adult braces. The effort required to hide that hardware twisted the rigging of Kyle's mouth into a dandruffy duck face, a tense and tender expression that gave him a hint of a squint and hitched his eyebrows a bit, made you think he was about to spit beyond a given point to win a $10 bet or emphatically pronounce the letter M to correct someone who heard Kyle say N. I hung the apron from the shower head and wondered whose proud neck would soon bend under the black cotton yoke as the next member of the Papa Taco proletariat. The Made in China tag reminded me I wasn't the first flawed link in this fatal chain of events. Some poor fucker on the other side of the world was probably working at that very moment under harsh lighting and the shadow of a brutal overseer, racing to finish another dozen dozen of these aprons with cramped hands and a sore back before collapsing in a cold concrete dorm rumbling with the echo of coughing restless men. I put my feet in the tub and sat on the edge, soaped the underarms and collar of my shirt over bare knees checkered with pink and purple floor tile impressions. The craftsmen who tiled this building likely worked with sons or apprentices who paid in sweat to serve a master. In return, they acquired a lucrative skill set blending precision and creative expression, demanding full participation of brain and body. Before plywood, sheetrock, and nail guns reduced home construction to a fast food process, the average guy could pick up a trade and live well, at least do better than just getting by, afford to build himself a house or buy one, fill it with a family and make it a home. Maybe have enough energy left to discover and develop a personal reserve of talent. Water that weird seed tuned into higher forms of human expression and create something people can't snap their fingers and suddenly have, can't beg for or buy in a store. I missed being on the supply side of that action. I checked my wrinkled fingertips, slowly dragged them over my lips to gauge the recession of my calluses. Felt how they'd faded from thick pads to faint patches, more memory than mass now that I had officially gone soft. I could no longer say I was a musician. Couldn't keep pretending to be a songwriter, couldn't even claim to be an artist working shitty jobs to nobly chase the dream of making my own music. The odd open mic night at the beanery was the last time, the only time I'd felt something close to happiness, standing beside Margaret and putting our sound out there. We hadn't played together since Christmas. I'd not written a decent song in years. Every shift at Papa Taco was another slow march in chains plus tips. That place had captured the last marketable parts of my mind and soul, ground them down to fine powder, and now there was nothing left. No me inside me anymore. Fuck it. Kyle had won. He was probably on speakerphone with Pastor Mike right now.